Dear Respawn Entertainment, Would you please fix your net code so that the first two minutes of every game isn't either a laggy mess or stuck in an infuriatingly inconsistent bullet time that makes 50% of matches unplayable? Sincerely, uh <laughs> okay, like, what if I literally just stopped it right there? Get me a TikTok deal! I have a great idea! <laughs> Hi! It's me! Austin! And don't worry, Respawn, you're doing amazing, sweetie. And as much as I'd love to make this video about the things I would do to Mirage if he'd let me... No! This is not what this video is about! <sighs> Today, I'm doing a video on the ultra super mysterious character that is Jack! I mean, Wraith, the teleporting, portal making, psychic she demon with amnesia. Hey, here's a pro tip why don't you use your profound psychic powers to figure out what your past is so you don't have to actually fight in a fatal blood sport while looking for evidence? I mean, I've been playing for weeks and I can personally attest to the impossibility of actually finding clues to game lore while you're getting shot at. Hashtag, where's my creative? mode, hashtag free cam tools would also be nice. In any case, today we're going to use a combination of math, theoretical particle physics, and a wee bit of philosophy to explain how Wraith's powers work, because I have apparently completely forgotten the trauma hemorrhage I got making my Tracer episode two years ago. Note to future Austin, stop trying to figure out the logic behind magic video game characters that play jump rope with the laws of relativity. <sighs> okay, all right. Where's Mirage? Ah, uh, you always know how to calm me down, buddy. Anyway, I'm gonna be doing something a little different than normal, and instead of going on a rabid tangent about why what Wraith does is impossible, I'm gonna just presuppose that it is and explain, to the best of my abilities, how her powers work. You know, like a real scientist, I ain't just gonna say, this observable reality is impossible, and then just move on, even though it probably is. And I'm gonna be looking at, specifically, how her psychic predictive powers work, because, well, I've already done an episode on how portals work, and as much as I would love to collapse into a puddle of babbling mush moaning about eyes on the inside by trying to explain how phasing is a traversal into an extra gravitational dimension as theorized by Dr. Lisa Randall to explain the hierarchy problem using string theory, I need my brain for stuff. So, we're gonna focus on one aspect of Wraith's powers because I promise you, it is fascinating enough. And if this were her only power, she'd still be an incredibly overpowered person in real life. So, for the noobs out there who don't know, we're gonna go over the basics of what Wraith's powers and background are. Apex Legends is an extension of the Titanfall universe taking place about 20-ish years? after the end of Titanfall 2, after the war depicted in the first two games has been resolved. The short story is that all the parties involved left these fringe frontier worlds called the Outlands, where now there's just like, presumably Mal Reynolds clones trying to scratch out a living. For a long time, tribes and factions did what they do everywhere, ward for superiority. At some point, however, they stopped and agreed to settle their differences in the Apex games instead of in Civil War. Basically, gladiatorial battles with guns and, well, guns, mostly, and the occasional chemical warfare. Anyway, this blood sport was probably founded by one of the antagonists of Titanfall 2 and leader of the mercenary group, the Apex Predators, Kubin Blisk. That's not super important for today, but it's something to keep in mind for another time. As for Wraith, there's not a lot of information. She just one day woke up in a prison for the mentally ill controlled by the Interstellar Manufacturing Corporation, a massive interstellar corporation slash government. She doesn't know her name, age, nothing. Just that she woke up there, heard strange voices telling her how to use her super cool powers, and she eventually used them to escape. Now, she's only fighting in the Apex games to find out more about herself. Seems exhausting. Like, did did you at least check the library first? These powers in-game manifest specifically as portals you can create from one place to another, weird sort of teleportation, and I think most interestingly, voices that warn you when you're in danger. 
Traps around the corner, you get a warning. Sniper aiming at your head, look out! It's like playing Hellblade, send you a sacrifice, but the voices are actually helpful. And this, I think, is the most interesting power she has, and it gives me an opportunity to talk about something we have talked about before on this channel, but not like, I think, on the level of detail I'm going to. The many worlds theory of quantum mechanics. <laughs> I've been thinking about this a lot for oh, the past few weeks, and I'm convinced that there's only one possible way that Wraith can predict the future, and it's because she can't predict the future. Confused? Welcome to the living nightmare that's been my past three weeks. But I think I finally figured it out. But first, before I go on and explain what's happening, I gotta give you the foundational information first. In quantum mechanics, an experimentally verified model for how our universe works on a molecular level, molecules don't don't really have positions. I mean, I mean they do, but instead of being determinable points that move with predictable Newtonian movements, they're actually represented by wave functions that determine the probability of a particle being in a certain place. So a particle is most likely to be here, but it could be here, here, or even possibly all the way over here. And this is what's known as the quantum superposition, which can be translated as it's basically somewhere around here. We can't predict exactly where a particle will be, but we can find it if we take a measurement, even though our measurements are still somewhat imprecise. When you measure and find a particle, this waveform collapses before it begins to spread out all over again and we lose track of precisely where the particle is. This is unsurprisingly called wave function collapse. This is often oversimplified in the Schrodinger's cat thought experiment composed by physicist Erwin Schrodinger to criticize applying quantum mechanics to everyday objects, but it's still helpful. Basically, there's a Goomba in a box that you can't see and inside the box box with the Goomba is a flask of poison that has completely random, non-zero, say 50% chance of being shattered with a hammer and killing the Goomba. We can't know whether the flask is shattered until we open the box. The state of the Goomba is in a superposition. Until we open the box, it is just as likely to be alive as it is to be dead, so therefore it is both alive and dead. Opening the box is a waveform collapse. Oh, good, dead Goomba this time. Now we live in a world of certainty until we, I don't know, put another Goomba in the box with a new flask of poison. This is a picture of what's going on on a particle level in a more or less dramatically oversimplified way. There is, of course, another solution though. That Schrodinger, in his attempt to criticize or poke fun at applying quantum mechanics to real life, may have been onto something. That the Goomba is, in fact, for realsies, both alive and dead, even after you open the box, and this is is the many worlds theory of quantum mechanics. When you open the box and measure the state of the Goomba and you find, oh, seriously, another dead Goomba? I got, I gotta get into the box, guy. Anyway, when you open the box and find a dead Goomba for the 10th time in a row, an entire other world is created in parallel where, hey, guess what? Goomba's alive. And we've covered this at length, talking about things like Undertale and saved games in general. And it is a fun way to visualize saved games. Every time you die, no big deal. You reload and a different outcome happens happens in real time. It's a nice little bow to wrap around this story, but it's not the whole story, not by a long shot. But let's loop back to Apex Legends. Why am I bringing this up at all? Because it's my belief that Wraith's seemingly psychic power isn't a psychic power at all. Rather, that she's able to communicate with herself across these parallel timelines in real time. We'll get to the evidence for how eventually, but why do I think this? It's simple. The voice warning her? It's her voice. And it's not just her voice. It's broken sounding, like there's interference, like you'd imagine there'd be from communicating across frickin' quantum mechanical realities. But it's deeper than that. Wraith herself suggests that her powers are timeline based with her vocal quips. There are a lot of them, but the ones that stand out the most to me are maybe in another time or space you killed me, but not this one. There are multiple ways this could end. I chose this one and don't worry, I would have gotten you either way. While many of them suggest predictive powers, these ones are explicit in their mentioning of other possibilities and that on top of it, maybe she's actually even capable of choosing a timeline. That's not super clear, but you say, big deal. She can see different outcomes. That's pretty par for the course for video game characters, and you would be right. That's not an uncommon thing, but she is capable of communicating with multiple branches of what can be done for what, at least half a second into the future from her current spot. That is not an insignificant power, and it also has some troubling implications for all those warnings you hear about being aimed at, but more on that in a bit. I think what's lost in a lot of people is just how complicated the many worlds 
theory actually is if you take it as true. To simplify things, let's just put Wraith in a simple world where she can go either left or right per, I don't know, like server tick of Apex Legends. So every 33 milliseconds, a tick is the smallest relevant unit of time for an online game. It's basically the speed at which the state of the game world updates. In Apex Legends, it's 33 milliseconds or 30 hertz, meaning it updates 30 times per second. Here's a branching fractal tree I wrote in Python to illustrate the different possible choices she could make. Unfortunately, it can only render a branch up to one pixel, which means it stops about eight ticks in, which already in this oversimplified decision tree is 512 different possible combination of choices in less than half a second. Holy crap, that's 512 different wraiths communicating across quantum mechanical lines with each other. If I were to extend this tree to include a full second of decisions of just left or right, the number of parallel wraiths would exceed 2.1 million in just one second. And I couldn't even get my code to run this, by the way. Once the estimated render time exceeded 10 days, I just... I just turned it off. And when you look at the total number of combinations of choices, which I was able to find using some debug language to display move position, move speed and direction and wherever you're looking, the numbers get way higher. There are 36,000 different positions you can look just up and down and another 36,000 left and right. And the fastest speed I was able to achieve with Wraith using her ultimate and her special ability, which stack was 962.72, which amounts to about 24.97 meters per second and a few other variables. I was able to determine a conservative number of possible moves Wraith can make just per server tick. Not full second, just every 33 milliseconds. Adding this to a few different modifiers, like if she's jumping, crouched, what gun she has of the two or her fists, whether she's switching weapons or firing, reloading, blah blah blah, gives us a total number in just one itty bitty tick of the in-game universe of 21 Quinn trillion possible choices she could make. Now, according to quantum mechanics wave functions, we know that while these are the possible moves she can make, they're not the most likely. For instance, if you're going north, you're most likely to keep going north and slightly less likely to turn right or left and the least likely to turn around. So even if we reduce this number by 35% and presume that Wraith can't communicate with the more outlandish probabilities like aliens spontaneously materializing and winning the match for her because they're too distant from her current timeline and probability, that's still 7.5 quintillion choices. I can barely figure out what shirt to wear in the morning and this is the utterly mind-boggling reality of the many worlds theory. The number of new universes and worlds created per tick is bigger than we can possibly imagine. This is not per object in the world and per choice you make. This is happening on a molecular level. No, smaller, per particle, per tick of the universe, which is way faster than an online game server. Our real universe tick rate, instead of being 30 times per second, is more like 10 million trillion 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 times per second. I think I said that. That, right? That's per second per every molecule. Considering there's about 7 times 10 to the 27 atoms just in your body right now, that is a lot of new universes being made per second. And that's if you even count all the particles in those atoms. So, okay. So what can we get from all of this? What does this mean for Wraith? A lot, actually. It means she's getting overwhelmed with information all the time from other variations of herself. It means that every time she gets warned of a person aiming at her head, it's because she either heard one of her parallel selves get shot by a parallel player and that Wraith warned the others to get out of the way as her final act, or that one of the other parallel Wraiths heard that and communicated it up the line. It means that Wraith is hearing herself die all the time. Even if she can only hear a scant handful of others next to herself in the timeline until the energy required to send information becomes too great because the choices made by her other selves were too divergent from her own. And believe it or not, this may actually be possible. Using a scientific tool called an ion trap, it's just something that isolates an individual ion, it may be possible to measure the existence of parallel worlds before they become too divergent or engage in decoherence. We don't yet know what the limitations are for this experiment if the many worlds interpretation happens to be true, but in theory we can send not just information but energy between different timelines because they remain weakly coupled with each other for brief 
periods of time. Just mere milliseconds or nanoseconds. The more they decohere, the more difficult sending and receiving information would be until it ultimately would come basically impossible. This explains a lot about Wraith's state of mind and why she's simultaneously nihilistic and optimistic. Because she knows that she's highly likely to exceed in her goals, that the mere fact that she has other hers looking out for her greatly increases her chances of survival and discovering the truth. That having the briefest leg up into the future is enough to turn the tables. It means that even if she dies, she can help herself live. Every time she loses, she helps herself in the long run. She learns not just from her mistakes, but from her mistakes, and her mistakes, and hers, all faster than you can even think. What an incredible world to live in. One where you know that no matter how hard what you're trying to do is, somewhere, somehow, you'll succeed because you are a part of a team. I'm not trying to offer a life truth to live by here. We don't even know if the many worlds theory is even true, and it doesn't offer us many solutions to our everyday life, even if it were. Philosophical schools and concepts like modal realism try to extrapolate meaning from these outlooks, but at the end of the day, we're just here in our own timeline, just trying to do our best. Sometimes we succeed, and sometimes we fail. Sometimes we go left and trip and fall on our faces, and sometimes we go right and discover an ice cream shop or a park or a beautiful stranger that we'd never met before. Life is full of failures, triumphs, roadblocks, and Mario Kart speed boosts, and I think if there's anything we can take away from the determination and the face of nihilism that we see in Wraith is that the effort is its own reward. Failure is an opportunity to learn and better ourselves, and no roadblock is ultimately insurmountable. You got this. I'm rooting for you. Sincerely, Austin.